You can listen to The Professional Left wherever you get your podcasts, on Netroots Radio, or at our website, proleftpod.com, where you can also contribute to this podcast. There's a PayPal button at our website, or you can mail us a letter and or contribution at P.O. Box 9133, Springfield, Illinois, 62791. This is the podcast for Juneteenth, 2020. It's not safe for work. Coming to you live from the Cornfield Resistance, where everything here is named for Lincoln, and there is no Jefferson Davis anything. It's the professional left with Drift Glass and Blue Gal. That's true. There, is, there are no monuments to Jefferson Davis in Springfield, Illinois. At all. Which is Damn weird. Damn right. Because we are in the middle of Trump country, but it's like... Nah, nah we really we're not gonna do. go that far. You know, yeah. We'll, we'll fly the Confederate flag in private. We'll talk yeah. a lot of shit in private. We'll be racist in private. We'll vote for racists in the privacy of our voting booth, clustered around a table at the diners. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll mm-hmm. talk a lot of shit about Hillary and well, um, and the code word is Chicago. Yeah, you don't oh, have oh, to God, say yeah. the N word. You just say Chicago. Ruining the state, Chicago. Yeah, look, without yeah. Chicago, this would be fucking Iowa. Without the agriculture. With, yeah, without yeah. the agri- without it, any of the charm of yeah, Iowa. Yeah, without any of the charm. <laughs> or really the university system, which is well, all Iowa. Economically, has. yeah, that's yeah. it. That's and, it. But they're very uh, very comfortable around here uh, talking about Barack Obama as a Kenyan usurper. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a whole lot on Facebook, uh, local Facebook, local um, business owner, pillars of the community Facebook about just some rancid racist shit. But you well, and conspiracy theory stuff. The guy, the guy you're talking about, who owns a plural, fairly large plural. business in town. There, there are multiples, but yeah, let's let's stick to him. Uh, um, going on about Q. I mean, going on about PizzaGate. Going right. on about really insane stuff. Yeah. That said, drift class, blue gal. Uh, we want to apologize to our listeners for last week's show getting truncated. We don't know how that happened. But for some reason, the last minute or so, including how the Internet kitties are doing, was cut off of last week's show. We know exactly how it happened, Luke Al. Don't we lie. do? I ran what? my mouth for more than an hour, and <laughs> the good people at Buzzsprout said, that's it, and just no. cut us off arbitrarily. Well, I don't know that, because we have a pretty much unlimited recording time with them that's right true. now. So That's true. However, we've decided to just uh, let you know that the Internet Kitties are exactly the same as they were last week. And we've yes. repeated the end line from last week's show. So and it, we will make sure that it goes up so that you don't have that completion anxiety mm-hmm. issue because shaving well, a haircut two bits is yeah. what it's supposed to be. Ah, yes. Ah. No, shaving a haircut and nothing is just no it's unacceptable no we also want to acknowledge today is juneteenth we are it, recording this on juneteenth this was the day that slavery officially ended for the last people to find out about it right, right. and quick question about that before we uh-huh. get too far uh, i did not learn about that in school i learned no, about I that from either. my neighbors from right you know who i've spoken about before um but i learned about it when i was a little kid but i learned about it because our neighbors were African American and very good friends of ours. So I don't think I learned about it until maybe in the past ten years. Yeah, to be honest, I I didn't know. I grew up in a nearly all white high school and nearly all white mid, uh, middle school and all white elementary school, and mm-hmm. we didn't learn about that in Ohio. No. Well, and speaking of which, uh, uh, one more aside, and I promise we'll go back to the main line, which is uh, I am I am an observer and very occasional participant in the um, planned community high school that I went to uh-huh. uh, group on Facebook. My Facebook mm-hmm. is evil and you should all quit it. Um, I, I, I just watch. I just look and I watch and I look and I watch. But I am, I'm as stunned by the number of people who, whose memories of that town at that time were, it's great. It's wonderful. We were all ex-military. Our families were, went to church together. It was such a harmonious and wonderful community. And a couple of black people. Who weigh mm-hmm. in like, yeah, you know what? I'm willing to leave all the shit that I had to put up with in the past. But let me just let me just explain to you. Not everybody had a lovely time growing up in this fucking lily white supper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I can tell mm-hmm. you for a fact that and it's a great little reminder that there are lots of people who have really fond, legitimate memories of of. Uh, pancake days and 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 swim meets and mm-hmm. Fourth of July mm-hmm. parties and and on and on and on um, that were completely ran completely parallel to a really fucking racist 
um, things going on mm-hmm. in our own town. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway. Well, I think a lot of us have horrible memories of high school. Yeah. And so the the people who were doing the bullying remember it as a fine time. Yes, yeah, they do. That, Don't they just? just? Yeah. We had a union electrician in our house this We week. did. We sure as hell uh, did. Installing some new uh, lights in our basement because we believe that Junior Dude is going to be here for at least the first semester of senior year in college. Yeah, we took out and, the original kerosene lamps and we had. Well, them put it in. was pretty bad down there. I mean, yeah. it, it still is pretty bad down there. But uh, now we can we're going to clean it up and fix it up. But I couldn't clean it up or fix it up until I could see what was down there to you know. And it is a waterproofed basement, semi finished basement, and. Yeah. For a 21-year-old guy, perfect. it's okay. It's perfect. Uh, uh, well, the one drawback, <laughs> well, now that it's semi-waterproof, the one drawback is the ceiling, the exposed beam ceiling with the nails and the conduit work, um, runs about four inches lower to the ground than my head. Yeah, he has so, to wear a bike helmet down I there. I do. It's, it's hilarious. But anyway, that's more information than right. anybody wants to know. <laughs> And we did hire a union electrician we to did. come in and do the work. And I was very work. grateful for the professional work that he did. I wanted to point that out. He gave us some very nice stickers for our laptops, too, from the electrician's union. So good he's for local, him. He's union. He came in and honored our, our request, uh, our insistence on wearing a mask. Yep. Um, he, he did exactly what he said he was going to do in his estimate. And it's just local and union, and, you know, that would solve, I swear to God, half the problems in this country would be solved if people just spent their money locally and supported strong labor unions. Yep. Not police unions, but no. otherwise, yes. No, so it um, be rebuilt. Yeah. <laughs> rebuilt from the bottom up. Uh-huh. Uh, we just, we have a question for some of our listeners who are experts in this sort of thing. Yeah. We, need, we need, are looking for video editing software. Mm-hmm. And Microsoft doesn't have Movie Maker anymore. No, so they just got rid we, of it, which pissed just, me off. And we have lap we have PC laptops at this point. Mm-hmm. Uh, if we have to move over to Mac, let us know. If the, if you know of something that's good, let us know. Okay. Yeah. The Supreme Court this week dealt out a couple of surprises. <laughs> yes, they did. In our household, five to four is good enough. You know that was the the conversation I had with middle child. Yeah. She said, but mom, it was five to four. And I said, it's a win. Yeah. Take the <laughs> and W. Five to yeah. four, you take it. You take it, you yeah. take it, you take it. If it's the if it's the right decision, you take it. And who knows what tomorrow will bring with the uh-huh. Supreme Court. I we know for a fact that John Roberts made deals to keep Obamacare intact. Right. And he that, traded. that meant he traded. He traded things. And one of the things was Medicaid expansion was left up to the states, which made it a racist decision. Yes, it did. Uh, in a lot of states. And so, uh, well, and you know, the, that, that was a trade off within the Supreme Court. And, and the, the court decision was very narrow. The Deferred yeah. Action for Childhood Arrivals, DACA, the, the Dreamers, uh, were told, were not told, welcome here. This is mm-hmm. your home now. It was, oh, the way that the Trump administration tried to fuck you over was incorrect so they should go back and try again in a more uh court friendly way so but which they won't do in an election year no no well it's also you know i mean again local social media is flooded with i i am i have associations with the local immigrant action network yes you do yeah they do great work they do great work and they're underfunded and underrepresented and the people there are awesome and it's it's this massive sigh of relief because the people that we know People that we work with who are uh, who fall under DACA are great and hardworking and wonderful and sweet and just want to be live in the country where they have lived their whole lives. And a lot of them are in healthcare. Yeah, yes, they are. Um, but it it is kind of a a a home is here is the general sentiment, which is great. Mm-hmm. And the other one is yeah, but um, yeah. just you know keep your don't get happy just yet. And I think mm-hmm. those, those are both appropriate and it's just incredibly cruel and it's, you know, cruelty is the point. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But yes, mm-hmm. we will take the W and the W is uh, DACA lives on and LGBTQ rights live on. Mm-hmm. Imagine mm-hmm. that. Apparently uh, Roberts doesn't want to be on the wrong side of history. <laughs> and- yeah. Yeah. I think that's it. And, and I want to go back for a minute to the DACA sure. decision and just highlight what Neil Katyal had to say yesterday about mm-hmm. how incompetent this administration is. Yes. 
And that's not a surprise to anyone, but they really don't do things in a way where the Supreme Court can help them. Mm -hmm. They just undo what Obama did and expect everyone to go along with it. Uh, Donald Trump can do whatever he wants because he's president, but Barack Obama can't do whatever he wants because he was president. Right. And uh, the it was the incompetence of how they went about things that gave the Supreme Court the opportunity to say, no, you did it the wrong way. Well, and they this is another in, in a long, long list, boring list of examples of how they, as I've said before, the, the right has always kept two sets of books. Mm-hmm. And one is the bullshit conspiracy. Liberals are tyrants. They're coming for your guns. They'll make your kids gay shit that they feed the base to keep them stupid and angry and voting to cut their own throats. And the the other set of books is like, yeah, we understand how international relations work and how defense treaties work and how NATO works and how the economy works. And we just want our tax cuts. Mm -hmm. And we understand Mm -hmm. that we have to tell a bunch of mouth breathing racists, a bunch of scare stories about people coming, brown people coming for you to get them to vote for our tax cuts. We understand that. We know it's all bullshit. But we tolerate it because it gets us what we want. And then under the Bush administration, they burned that second set of books. Right. They started operating as if the first set of books were 100% true, which made the base really happy because they were all told, okay, we all know that Barack Obama was born in Kenya, but we can't really say that out loud because people will call us racist just because we're racist. So we need to pretend to be, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're Jeb Bush Republicans. Well, they got to celebrate because one of their own is now president of the United States. The problem being that they now operate as if those things are true. Yeah. As if, as if the, since, uh, since Barack Obama was a tyrant who appointed czars to do whatever the fuck he wanted, uh, that's just how things work. So I will do the same thing. I'll just hit undo, 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 appoint czars, rip shit off, because that's what presidents get to get away with. Except it isn't how things yeah. work. It has never been how things work. It's how we had to limp along during the eight years prior to Donald Trump when racists like Mitch McConnell had their boot on the throat of the Congress and wouldn't let anything pass. Right. Um, but but that isn't really how it works. And when it hits the courts, they're like, no, see, you can't just like your wife did rip off Michelle Obama's speech <laughs> and call it yours, but say it in reverse. That right. is not how shit works. And Donald Trump is not only racist and loud, he's dumb as fuck. And he really thought that's how things work because he doesn't bother to understand anything. And that's what's saving us, frankly. Uh, is- there, there's a new book out this week by Steve Bennon, who used to write for Crooks and Liars, called yes, The Imposters. What does he do now, His Blue book, Gal? He's, he, he is... Uh, Rachel Maddow's producer. Oh, that's right. Yes. And uh, his book is called The Imposters. I've started to read it. Um, he he does talk about at the beginning of his book, starting his story is with the healthcare debate. Right. Which is way too late to be starting the debate. Yes. I And I, I yes. think you and I agree on that. Yes. Uh, but his book is very much along the lines of what we've been talking about for 551 episodes. Yes. Uh that Republicans don't know how to govern, that they they are a post-policy party. And that is particularly uh, in high relief this year mm-hmm. in that the Republican Party has decided to just copy over their platform from 2016. Yes, which is hilarious. Which is hilarious because and, – and it's because of COVID and having lots of committee meetings about platform – Right. Seems totally impossible, except that Biden is doing it with yes. all kinds of Bernie people it's so on these boring. committees. It's so boring doing <laughs> stuff like reading is boring. Yeah. We're just copy paste done. We're done. Right. Right. Yeah. Except Ex- that the um, 2016 platform talks all about the incompetence of the current president. Yes. <laughs> Oop. Oop. Did anybody read this shit? Okay. No, that, that's too complicated a question. Does anybody read anything? And the answer is no. no. Why can you imagine? Can you imagine Eric and Don Jr. Eric, Eric. sitting there being part of a policy discussion? Yeah, after the first paragraph. You know, I like cheeseburgers. What do you mean? I yeah. don't want to do this anymore. I want yeah. to go out and play. After the yeah. first paragraph, and yeah. and since they're you know Uday and Kuse, they get to go out and play. So um, yeah, the, now that the the official <laughs> Republican platform uh, talks about the you know horrible. Um, incompetence and awfulness of the current occupant of the White House, which is 
you know, chef's kiss. Per- it won't matter to the to the base who are all no. busy, you know, licking they doorknobs. They were it and, anyway. No, right? They're all but busy I'm licking doorknobs matters, in Oklahoma. It matters to some of the base. It matters to the anti-abortionists because they wanted stronger language, yes. you know, than ever. Of course, it also means you don't have to touch on all the Ukraine stuff that uh, Vladimir Putin wrote into the Republican you mean, <laughs> Republican platform in 2016. You mean the, the total exoneration. Total, total exoneration. Yes. Total uh, exoneration. All right. We have a couple letters from readers, and then we'll get into some of the politics of the week. I, although yeah. these letters also get into some of the politics yeah. of the week. So. All right. Hit me. All right. Uh, this is from M. M writes, Dear Gigi and BG, your big ticket subjects are well known, so I won't repeat, but I want to thank you for these. Talking about staying employed as well-paid jobs dry up and a mm-hmm. resume must be maintained. DG, that was you several years ago, but I'm using it now. Uh-huh. Hey, we're we're glad. Mm-hmm. I know how hard that is. Mm-hmm. Um, number two, talking family dynamics when one child has to do some heavy lifting early on left by another sibling. Mm-hmm. I am that firstborn daughter who later tutored her little brother in math. He's doing great now in the trades. BG, that was you recently. Three, the phrase, my parents did what they could with the resources they had, which were often not enough. Not enough time, not enough sleep, not enough knowledge, not enough money, simply not enough. But they deserve forgiveness for being human. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a tough one. Uh, that's a tough one to re- realize your parents are human. Yeah. Uh, I think I think the lucky people figure that out in their 20s. Yeah. Some people don't figure that out until their 50s mm-hmm. uh, or until their parents Forever. pass away. You know, yeah, that, ever. yeah. Well, oh, mom whole, and dad were just human. <laughs> there's, there's that whole, I'm, you know, we've we've sort of gotten into introducing the kids to uh, all in the family. Oh, um, a yeah. A little bit at a time. And they're astonished this was on television. Yes. Astonished, like oh my god, they're talking about black people and gays, and they're letting him say those things. Like, yeah, this is the seventies, and this was Norman Lear. But there is a there is an episode, I believe, where he and um, uh, Mike are stuck mm-hmm. in a basement, and they're both getting drunk, and Archie starts talking about his father mm. and he, how how you know he's abusive and violent and drunk and whatever else, but you got to respect him because he's your father. And you realize, yeah, oh, getting shit. Out the belt. He got oh, out the belt all the yeah. time. Yeah. Oh shit! Yeah. That that's that's why this guy is this way. Yeah. And yeah. and of course, you ha- he's not allowed to question whether his father was a good parent or not because that's completely you know that's against God's will. Right. And you, right. you know, I I look at a whole bunch of these wing nuts who are making our lives miserable, mm-hmm. and wonder where along the line did you learn that it was okay to fucking be this way and that yeah. And that, and it, doing any reflection at all, admitting you're ever wrong at all, gets you whipped with a belt. I mean, mm-hmm. when did that happen? And mm-hmm. I would feel pity for them again if they weren't fucking up my country. But yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's a that's a longer view of human nature than you usually get from. I hate those guys. Right. Anyway, right. back to the letter. And finally, dealing with stress panic attacks. We never deal with stress or panic attacks in this house. Oh. I'm having one right now. It, it is a recurring theme in your podcast. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have recently been dealing with increasing acid reflux attacks in the past six months since COVID-19 layoff unemployment in my state has hit me. One, two, three. Mm-hmm. I've been laid low with flu-like symptoms. Clearly, my old imperfect coping methods are not working. Drift Glass, would you and Blue Gal give me something better than the usual? Walk every day. Do 30 sweaty running minutes every week. Lay off the emotional movies. Limit all forms of alcohol. Yeah, I mean. Okay. All right. So I'm not checking any boxes so far at all. No, so, no, no. Uh, well, a few, a few. I mean, we do get we do get some walking in in the house and we do get out and we do we watch the Rockford Files. We um, watch the Rockford Files. Yeah, and yeah. we we recommend that. That's on uh Amazon Prime. Amazon yeah. Prime. And we watch I, I on... watch Gunsmoke and I watch mm-hmm. um I watch old I watch old westerns. I, I when when I get freaked out when I see Khan Noonien Sung and Bella Oxmix and the woman who played um Major um 
Marla, whatever her name was, who was Khan's woman in the space seed, all on the same episode of, I think, Bonanza, all playing oh, wow. Indians. Like, and you realize, oh, this is how it was in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you spot young actors. There's a lot of young talent that is up and coming on shows like uh, Gunsmoke. Um, there's really bad shows that I kind of enjoy. Uh, the Tales of the Wells Fargo is just awful, and I just thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, uh, have gun will travel is a wonderful, um, thoughtful Western. So, but it really is. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not going back to want to relive those days because here we are on Juneteenth and let's realize that those days were not good for a yeah. whole lot of Americans, but I, I, I find good writing where I can find it. I find good acting where I can find it. I don't live in those worlds, but I, I remind myself of, that's pretty good. And that's really mm -hmm. well done. Hey, look at that. She's, oh my God. <laughs> you know, it's all these people who were in their 20s doing this thing. And I'm holding Quentin Tarantino to it. I want to see Bounty Law. Yes, Bounty Law. Six fucking you episodes make, of Bounty make Law. Bounty Law, honestly. Um, anyway, that, but it's, you know, and, and my uh, beautiful wife reads more than I do. So diving into a good book or four. Um, I'm finding it hard to read. A lot of people are finding it hard to read yeah. right now. And I, f I dip into books and figure out, you know, I can, I can try to read a chapter every day of something. Uh, and you just, knit like mad. So. And I knit, I'm knitting like crazy. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are, are taking to that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I noticed this week that um, you were really depressed yesterday and I was, was really depressed on Wednesday. Yep. We, we've, we have Wednesday evening church services on Zoom. We do. Just just sort of a meetup to say hi to everybody in mm -hmm. our adult Sunday school. And I fell asleep and forgot. And mm -hmm. I was supposed to be in charge of the Zoom room. And I just let everybody down. And it's because I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah. um, and I felt terrible for the rest of the night that mm -hmm. I had taken a nap instead of going to church. I just felt like I've let everybody down. It's like the and Garden of Gethsemane all over again. I Blue failed. Gal. No, yeah. I really, I failed. And it felt terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I know. And then I looked at my week and realized that you and I work from home and we, we work online. We do. And we're on, we've been online for 515 episodes. Yes, so this since 2010, mm -hmm. we've been working from home doing this. And now it's as if a thousand people have moved into our office. Yes. There is a Zoom conference every day. There's a Zoom conference to go to. There's online seminars. Everybody, because of COVID, has just, has decided to move their business online mm -hmm. and have meetups. Yep. And I can't, I literally can't take much more of it than, mm -hmm. than what I have right now. And I need to prioritize church, and I will do that. I will remember from now on that when, you know, I have a Zoom conference nine times a week. Well, and our loops are smaller than they used to be. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so yeah. I go from, you know, laundry to dishes to writing to laundry to dishes to writing to mail. I mean, there's a, a circuit we run every day, and it used to be bigger than this. Mm -hmm. It used to be mm -hmm. wider than this. It used to be going out to meet people. It used to be mm -hmm. going to a place to be with other people. And yeah. it is very much like living in um, the biodome. Yeah. Or you know, yeah. living living on a space spaceship. Station. Yeah, and we're not sure how long the mission is. You know, it's not um, a, a hardship yet. Um, we can still go outside and we can still order pizza, but it really is a completely alien environment, and mm -hmm. it it affects everything. And I'm referring to everybody I know, and it's affecting them in the ways they don't quite understand or can't quite put into words. And that's okay. This is not how people are supposed to live. Mm -hmm. I think we've said before. We put the economy into a medically induced coma to save the country. Yeah. And but that means that a lot of people like M who wrote this letter mm -hmm. are left without support. Absolutely. And I understand why she's having upset stomach every day. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just I've been there. It's if you don't know where your next rent check's coming from or where it's how you're going to feed your kid next kids next month. You can't focus. You right. can't focus. Um, it is, it is a loss equal to a death in the family. Yeah. You know, you, you, it's that level of stress. Mm -hmm. Um, and I don't know if it would be helpful for, for someone facing that to try to see 
medical professional online, you know, this is this is one benefit of this is these telehealth appointments mm-hmm. uh, for my kids have been great. I had one that was not so great, but it was a specialist who still wanted me to come in. And I'm like, no, no, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just told you I'm feeling fine. Yeah, but we want you to come in and do a test and do a blood work and do this. And it's like. You want your fifty dollar copay? I, you know, I didn't say that, but I know, I know that's what they're trying to do is stay in business. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's hard for a specialty practice to stay in business when no can't, one's coming in. Can you know. I just poop in a box and mail it to you? <laughs> <laughs> poop in a box, everybody. Poop in a box. Poop in a box. We've, we've made that joke before, but you know, when the UPS man comes with your poop box, and you're like, hold on, <laughs> hold on, just one minute. <laughs> We're gonna quick turn around here. I'm just saying, <laughs> have a little fun. You know, you know, Gala's humor is still humor. That's all yeah. I'm saying. Yeah. And some of the stuff that we joke about at home, we'll never make it on the podcast. Uh-huh. because, But it cracks us up and it makes us yeah. feel better. So, you know, what? if it yeah. makes you feel better, you should probably be doing it. And if it makes you feel bad, you should probably be doing less of it. Yeah. Yeah. But we're thinking about you, M. We are. Very much so. And all and of our boy, listeners who are I going know through about, this. I know about being out of work. I know about being on food stamps. I know about... Uh, waiting in line at the uh fuel fuel assistance office yep uh fuel assistance office was the second stinkiest office i had to go to the food stamp office smelled worse but Mm -hmm. done both of those and you know i was one of the clients that they loved to see walk in because i had all my kids social security numbers in a folder you know written inside the folder so that Mm -hmm. They didn't have any problem helping me. Right. Because I had all the information they needed, but it was hard and it was a full time job. Mm-hmm. Keeping body and soul together was a full time job. Yeah, being and poor is a full, full time job. Being poor is a full time job. And, uh, you know, I, I didn't have time to resent my ex husband going off to Norway, you know, on the first year after our divorce because. I didn't have time for that. I had three children and a visit to the food stamp office. So, uh, been there, done that. Um, and, and we're thinking about, we're thinking about you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Another letter. This is from Mark. Mark in Arizona. Hey, Mark. Hello, Drift Glass and Blue Gal. First, I would like to say one podcast a week is not nearly enough. <laughs> Okay, well, we'll let you know when we can invent another day in the week, and we'll put that right in Mark, there. Mark, <laughs> if you really want to listen to me growling into a microphone going, fuck these people, which, <laughs> which was my mood yesterday and the day before, I will put it up and, and you can listen to it. But really, it's less entertaining, especially when you live inside that person's head. Uh, R- Ruth Pundit imagine. had a tweet up today about fuck you Friday. Yeah. <laughs> and he just had a list of all the people who could yeah. F off. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Anyway, very kind of you to say that, Mark. We know where that we know that comes from a kind place. We, do. we really do. Uh, I've been listening to you both for well over a year now in an effort to add to the list of podcasts I listen to for my justice porn addiction. <laughs> that is a Muller she wrote term. Yes, justice porn. We're familiar of that. Uh If I remember correctly, I started listening during the Trump shutdown after Chuck and Nancy outsmarted Trump into owning the shutdown. Yeah. One podcast of the professional left and I was hooked. I am a 30-year-old black man from Mississippi and I'm currently living in Arizona for the past couple of years. We're about to have two great Democratic senators. Yay! Yay! But that is not why I am writing to you both. I'd like to highlight that you both have opened my eyes to the never Trumpers and the BS that is both ciderism. You know what? You know what? what? I spent all day not thinking about that yesterday. (laughs) (laughs) I've been in I've been in deep meditation trying to don't bitch about the never Trumpers. This let's let's have one fucking podcast. Where Drift Glass does not bitch about the Never Trumpers and what fools people are for handing their credibility over to them because they're going to get screwed in the end. So, you know, thank you so much, Mark, for uh, opening that wound up. I told Drift Glass that he is not allowed to change our podcast into the uh, After the Bulwark podcast. Yeah, we're not going to do that. No, that's what I have a blog for, right? That's what I'm talking about. Also, I agree, burn all the lifeboats. 
I kind of noticed both sides were being used in certain cable news programs. Megan McCain even does it on The View. Boy, she does. She, you know, both sides are equally bad. Okay. Uh, but I never bought into the both sides argument, even when I didn't realize what they were attempting to pull. I will not take up more of your time other to, than to say you have a faithful listener in this black Democrat from Mississippi. Blue gal, I would just like to say, though I'm a Democrat here in Arizona, I'm an independent. Mm -hmm. You mean you're registered independent. I get that. That's fine. I will crawl through broken glass in the Arizona sun to vote Trump and McSally out of office. Yeah, you, you I, I feel you. Yeah. Lastly, I would like to add that I have been subscribed to the New York Times for almost a year now, but thanks to Tom Cotton, that is changing. <laughs> Instead, the money... I will use for my subscription will be donated to the pro left pod. Well, thank oh, you very much. Thank you so much. Your podcast and drip glasses blog is more of a value to me than the New York times. Wow. wow. Thank wow. you. Thank you. That's where my money is better spent. I would like to ask a couple questions. If I may, I do not know nearly as much about Illinois politics as either of you, but my question is if Senator Duckworth is chosen as vice president or secretary of defense, mm -hmm. Who do you think will be appointed to fill her seat? Also, who would you both like to see appointed to fill her seat? Yeah. I would like to see Lauren Underwood chosen. I believe there is a lot of value in Underwood considering she flipped a seat blue in the Midwest. I feel the same about Katie Porter filling Senator Harris's seat yeah. if, she, if Senator Harris is chosen as vice president. What are your thoughts? Thank you for giving your time and passion for all you put into your work, including postcards to voters. Sorry for the long email. Sincerely, Mark. Mark, that's not a long email. No. <laughs> but um, no. we're glad to, to hear from you. And this is a game that I don't play very often because moving, it, it's sort of like moving Barbie dolls around a chessboard. Like, right. oh, let's put this person in this slot and this person. First of all, it's not my decision. Right. Secondly, it usually is a lot more complicated than what any of us on the outside can see as to which constituencies are being considered. Like, I don't know how much Barack Obama is being consulted by the Biden team in terms of who to pick for this and that. Well, what we I can don't... say, Blue Gal, yeah. <laughs> unequivocally, is yeah. that replacing a U.S. senator in Illinois is fucking golden. It's fucking okay. golden. We can say that for <laughs> sure. Absolutely for sure. So it's a big, important thing. But, I, th I think it, we can cross Rod Blagojevich off, yeah, the, off list. the list. And, <laughs> and we can also say that despite having gotten many, many, many emails from the Biden campaign going, I'm pleading with you, uh, not one of them has ever said, for your opinion about which person should right. be my Give vice president. Give us your president. short list. Yeah. No, we're no one has ever asked us that. So <laughs> we're, not, we're not looped into that decision tree, which is good. Um, yeah. But if it should happen, there are a lot of but, good choices. Well, let me let's let's start with the one that he mentioned, yes. Lauren Underwood, who did flip a red seat to blue, That's, which in some ways is a disqualification for her to go to another yeah. office because it's important for her to hold that house seat. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, if she flipped yeah. a, if she flipped one, I want to hold that one and it would be a shame to lose it, even though her promotion to Senate seat would be well deserved. Right. We have an African-American woman as lieutenant governor. Juliana Stratton is a very smart, very capable person. Mm hmm. And uh, she would be a good choice, mm -hmm. uh, just just in terms of personality and putting a, a another woman of color in that seat. Mm -hmm. You mentioned Kwame Raoul. Kwame Raoul. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned Kwame Raoul. He's a, he, he is the current attorney general of Illinois. Yes, currently has tested positive for COVID. So we're yeah, you know yeah. We're, we're thinking of you. We're, we're, our prayers are directed in, in his direction. He is coming up through the Barack Obama seat. Um, path to mm -hmm. political mm -hmm. power. Um, mm -hmm. There are a lot of good choices in Illinois. Um, and the the only question I have is the person who would take over the seat would have to immediately start campaigning again for the right. Senate because right. um, you want someone who's going to keep that seat intact. And we have had, you know, Republican senators in this Republican state. Republican senators, few right. Far between, but we've had... So this is not a, a blue state yet. It's still kind of flushed purple a little bit around the edges. So um, I, I put in a uh, dark horse candidate, Tony Preckwinkle, who is the um, Cook County board president. I, I know her. I've met her many times. She has 
some really serious political flaws, but she also knows how, knows how to read a budget. And she, when I was working with the city of Chicago, she was one of the only aldermen who ever showed up to budget hearings mm-hmm. at, at city council loaded for bear. She knew every yeah. line item. She knew every dollar. She had all the questions she wanted to ask. She was mm-hmm. extremely well prepared. Um, and, and like uh, Juliana Stratton, uh-huh. And also, we also mentioned in our d- earlier discussion, Sheila Simon, who yes. is Paul oh, yeah. Simon's daughter, yeah. who was also lieutenant governor. Uh, I believe she was also, she might have been attorney general of Illinois for I, a while, I too. Right. I think yes. that's right. Mm-hmm. You know, all of these women, Tony Preckwinkle, uh, Stratton and Simon are all in their 50s. So mm-hmm. they could hold that Senate seat for 20 years. Right. right. Um, and that's something you you really want. You want someone who's going to be able to be there for three three or four terms as senator yeah. we want um, Eliz- we want an elizabeth warren and yeah as tammy yeah. duckworth has shown by doing really good work in the senate the, the first mm-hmm. term you're there you dig into your area of expertise and establish yourself as a mm-hmm. rock solid um uh player you don't mm-hmm. swing for the fences immediately you don't you do the you you become a senator you become the person that there are people looking at going yeah, I can see this person there for the next 20 years. Yeah. Well, that's what Hillary Clinton did, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, Are you so, suggesting yeah. Hillary Clinton? I don't think no. so. No, no. <laughs> She's busy. No. She's got other shit to do. She is yeah. busy, and she she won't hold that for three terms, either. No. She won't hold, hold that seat for three terms. So, um, no, I, I think Stratton is a good choice, and, and uh, the other people about, we mentioned also. All right. I, I will more suggest. What about Barack Obama? That's a step down for him. Oh, it's a step way down for him. No, no. I, I'm thinking yeah. as long as we're just making stuff up. I mean, you know, I'm not going to resurrect the dead, but I'm thinking sticking Barack Obama on the Supreme Court or in the Senate would be in my in my imaginary universe. Now, the party has really kind of moved on from him. Mm-hmm. Um, we mm-hmm. we have a great affection for him and he was a fine president, et cetera. But that brand of let's all come together purple as one united stuff that's kind of has had its day and yeah. we've, we've seen that that doesn't work um but you know as long as we're giving jobs to people let's give yeah. some jobs well, that's to people. the thing i this is why i don't play this game very often yeah and and this is why when when yesterday amy klobuchar pulled her name from consideration and suggested that it should be a woman of color right um Good for her. I don't yeah. think she kneecapped Elizabeth Warren by doing no. that. The person that is chosen for vice president has to be ready to be president on day one, yep. has to be well known by the Senate and mm-hmm. respected within the Democratic Senate, mm-hmm. and has to bring black voters to the polls. Those are yes. the three requirements for yes. this job. Yes, it is. And we'll see what who Biden announces in on August 1st. But I'm not playing games with the, all the chess pieces no. that a lot of people are. Cause... Well, 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 people were saying, you know, that uh, on social media where everything's exaggerated like wildly. Warren Democrats are on fire over this thing Amy Klobuchar did. No, they're at, not. I looked at you and said, are, are we on fire? I don't think we're on fire. No, it's fine. You know, pick whoever you want. Pick. I, I have my list of preferences as long as you don't pick, <laughs> you know resurrected george wallace i'm okay with it yeah, um yeah. but it's this kind of we have to have this pitched battle over everything is no there are pit, there are things worth fighting over this is not one of them um and the next battle is coming sooner than you'd like so let's uh and, and i'm grateful that he did it the way as i said before the way he did it he eliminated the woman question from the discussion it's not is it going to be a woman it is going to be a woman yeah and so we're looking at these great democratic women as yeah qualified people oh my god look at all these qualified women yeah. oh my god look at all these qualified women we the are Democrats so have their blessed with yeah. all of these qualified women and that is a moment to that we need to sit back and appreciate yeah speaking of moments <laughs> we should sit back and appreciate um you want <laughs> This week, <laughs> I, I, let me put this in the phrase in the form of a question. Question. Mm-hmm. What is a Confederate monument that some liberals actually support? Yeah, Rick Wilson. Rick Wilson is a Confederate well, monument that some liberals are willing to defend uh, to their last breath, which is just kind of hilarious. 
Well, um, and and the thing is, it's come out this week. First of all, Rick Wilson really stepped in it with Domino's by he did. telling Domino's Pizza that their their brand was over you, over you a tweet they said brand. in 2012. Yeah, yes, you so your that brand. was that was funny for a day. Right. Um, but then the whole thing about Rick Wilson having a cooler on his boat that says the South will rise again and has a Confederate flag on the side of it. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute. I thought you were our friend. Well, <laughs> and I'm going to take a minute of privilege here and say that some of us have been pointing out that exact picture and that yeah. exact thing for a long time. But it yeah. wasn't it wasn't anything my my lovely conservative or liberal allies were la, 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 la. I don't want to think about this. Don't talk about this. But, you know, you're not my assignment editor. I get to write about whatever I want. That's been out there for a long time. What Rick Wilson did was he breached historical quarantine. Um, by that, I mean the entire, his entire shtick is based on let's pretend history began in 2016. Let's mm -hmm. not talk about anything that happened before that, because in addition to a uh, Confederate flag and the South will rise again, there's just a shit ton of really shitty, awful, racist, homophobic, off, just trash talking, calling Biden a moron tweets from him that go back for years. He's a very unpleasant person who says a lot of really horrendous shit. And the, the, but the deal was, let's not talk about any of that. Let's pretend because his, he's talking shit about Trump and that talking helps about shit about Trump. Trump. Yeah. And now he's on our side. Yay. Um, so, but the, that's the deal. The deal was from, I, I've been sternly lectured by my betters on the liberal side that shush, <laughs> shush. We're not talking about what happens before 2016. And all of their ads are all about 2016 forward. The Republican party used to be great. And then a bunch of stuff happened. We're not going to talk about. It. And then Donald Trump came along and Trump is the problem. And but you know what, Drift Class? It just it just now dawned on me. Yes. That one of the reasons you and I and and you more particularly see through Rick Wilson. Uh-huh. Is that you and I were bullied in high school. We were. And just going back to M's letter mm -hmm. and and sort of the acid reflex that comes up when uh -huh. certain buttons are pushed. Rick Wilson is a bully. Mm -hmm. And he's been bullying our side. Since the dawn of his career, he right. has been doing ads against Democrats. He's been doing ads to get bigoted Republicans to the polls. He's been slandering Democrats and propping up, shit. propping up really bad people for office and winning. And, and, and considering that he is a success at his career uh -huh. when he gets bigots out to vote to to get people in office who do yeah. not deserve to be there. Yeah. And the, and everybody who's on the Lincoln project with him all are the same there. That's their <laughs> history. Collectively. That's George Conway's history. That's Steve mm -hmm. Schmidt's history. That's uh, Charlie Sykes's history. And, and I don't want to broaden it out, but yeah, it's because these guys have been absolute thuggish bullies their entire career who have shit all over everything I value and love. And they got caught out when Trump won, which they were not expecting, and had to find some place to land. So they want to get rid of Trump so they can go back and take over their party. But um, the problem is that whole that whole scam depends on let's pretend nothing happened before 2016. Right. And I'm not and, willing to go along with that because the right, last well, that's time. That's the point is that the bully who kicks us down the stairs in at seventh grade, mm -hmm. if in eighth grade all of a sudden he's bullying somebody we don't like. We're not going to run over and put our arm around him and say, oh, you're my friend now. No, no. Because you're not. <laughs> well, and, and here's the thing, that, that liberals have worked really hard for a long time to, to have this moment where the moral high ground clearly belongs to the left. Yeah. And, and yeah. the left is giving it away to George Conway and Rick Wilson because mm -hmm. they make mm -hmm. good ads that hate Donald Trump. Well, they, yeah, that's great. You know, there are a thousand liberals who could do that. Why yeah. these people, I don't know. But again, just to go back, the reason that the, the deal they have struck, the devil's bargain they have struck with too many liberals I know is that everyone will just agree that 2016 and before is off limits, which which is exactly the same bullshit that we went through after the Bush administration collapsed. Right, We're right, all going to pretend right. these the Republicans never voted for George Bush. He never happened. La, 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 la. Let's just move on. And that is what bought us Trump. So I'm not going to go down the hole again. But 
Then Rick Wilson decided to take up some shit with Kaylee McEnany from 2012. Right. And suddenly he broke containment. Now, yeah. oh, yeah. we're talking about old shit. And this is exact. And believe me, people yeah. came flooding into this, this, this uh, breach were, were, were the worst people in the world, were the bright parts of the world. But they yeah. all came and said, oh, we're talking about the past now? Well, cool. Here's all Rick Wilson shit from the past. Look at this and look at this and look. Oh, my God. Look at this tweet here. Look at this tweet here. Look what he what, look what he calls Barack Obama. Look what he calls Van Jones. Oh, my God. Look look at this transphobic, homophobic bullshit he's pulling here. This is your hero? This is the guy you have yeah. running your, your ops campaign? This is Joe Biden's campaign manager? And that's really what he has been made into. Yeah. Yeah. And the, it bothers the shit out of me that it is. And, and again, I'm, I'm a little voice and I've taken more time than I should this week. Thanks again, Mike, for opening this old wound up and forcing me <laughs> to talk about this. But it Mark, really is Mark. just yeah. Mark. I'm sorry, Mark. Um, and I will not talk about it anymore. Um, other than to say I've said my piece. And if you want to hear me talk about this at greater length, go to my blog. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll write about it to my heart's content. Uh, uh, but. There is one Joe, more thing. Joe Walsh. Joe Walsh is also mad. Joe Walsh, not the good Joe Walsh, the bad no. Joe Walsh, who's now the good Joe Walsh because now he's a never Trumper, so now he's our friend. Um, but he's using his newfound credibility as the hero of the resistance to warn Democrats and progressives. That's you and me, blue gal. That if mm -hmm. we keep toppling statues of Jefferson and Washington, we will lose, and we will deserve to lose. This is based on one statue being knocked over by some small crowd in Seattle. But it gives they Joe knocked Walsh. knocked over Jefferson and Washington because they're slave owners? Was that something it? Like, I think Washington. I, I don't Washington. know who it was. I didn't pay attention. You know why? Because it was one incident. It was one incident. In yeah. And somebody place. knocked over Christopher Columbus and that was one instant, yeah, incident I'm, as well. It's I'm like, fine with that. Yeah. Whatever. You know, statues but, to old white guys. Get rid of all of them as far as I'm concerned. In public space. You gotta have statues of children and puppies. <laughs> but this is this is Joe Walsh doing yeah. exactly what I was worried that they're gonna do. They're, we've handed not we not me personally, but the left has handed people like this a a, a cudgel, a blunt yep. instrument, so yep. that now they get to speak for us. Now they're mm -hmm. on our side, so now they get to comment on what the shit we do and, and what's tell it? us what to do. And yeah. he's telling us yeah. what to do, and he's telling us, and he's lecturing us on what we shouldn't do. Of course, we're not doing this. One small group of people are doing this, but we're. But it's now, and it's now it's both sides. And now yeah. it's both sides, and yeah. now it's oh, you see, this is what Democrats are doing. Democrats apparently are on this rampage across the country, tearing down statues of our founding fathers, and that is giving ammunition to the Trump campaign. That is yeah. kicking no. your, your <laughs> new liberal friends in the balls, and that is being a hundred percent exactly who Joe Walsh has always been—a hateful, loudmouth, racist asshole. And and if you give him credibility, he will he will <laughs> raise it out your pockets and leave you for dead. Well, and even when he tweets "fuck John Bolton," he's not our friend. Well, John but Bolton's we're, not. Our friend. We're not going to have a John Bolton book club here at the no, podcast. No, but I will we're mention. I will, right on from that. I, I will mention um, something I called today. What was it? It was wingnut chain migration. Ah. It was it was my liberal allies saying, well, Bill Crystal's going to get a special pass because he hates Donald Trump. And now Bill Crystal's saying, my friend John Bolton gets a special pass because he's he's he may be a loud mouth and a lunatic and a bomb throwing, but he's very honest. It's like, oh, this is what. Oh, the one it asshole you invited in your house into legitimacy. Yeah. Yes, this, right. you invited one asshole to crash on your couch, and you turn around and have invited all the other assholes they know to come crash on your couch because you were dumb enough to let him in in the first place. And and now I'm done talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I swear, I'm, I'm talking about this specific issue. Um, well, but but speaking of Trump's incompetence, mm -hmm. I mean, th trying to stop this book and and not realizing that the court was going to be very interested in when you classified the data. Yeah. And, and if you classified it after it already appeared in the Washington post, and it's clear that you saw it in the Washington post and wanted to retroactively classify that information, the courts get to know that and they get to say, no, you don't get to do it. Well, that's what they did to Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Retroactively yeah. classify stuff that she was, she had mentioned in emails. They see yeah. See, she violated top secret rules. Yeah, yeah, yep. 
Yep. Um, I would like to send a special thanks out. There are a few people out there who are qualified David Brooksologists. Uh, besides Bos- you. Besides yes. me. There's Yaz. Uh, yep. There's Boswood. Yep. And there's a few others. Um, and Boswood did us all a great favor by shortening David Brooks's column down to one sentence. <clears throat> which is as follows. Moderates failed black America. Conservatives had nothing to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> which, which is... Not surprisingly, um, what I have been writing about for 15 years, which is David Brooks's great project. David Brooks's whole project is to is to erase all the icky parts of the conservative history and translate this entire history of the Republican Party and conservatism into uh, da- David Brooks leading noble Whigs through mm-hmm. dangerous hippie country, and that's what that's what his in his mind that's what conservatism has looked like. It is. A bunch of a few fringe lunatics on the right, a bunch of crazy hippies on the left, and moderate David Brooks leading the noble centrists to the promised land. And it it ignores every single thing about conservative history that David Brooks finds offensive. And that's part of his thing. And as long as he gets a column in the New York Times, he's going to keep doing that. So thank you for shifting your New York Times money over to our podcast. Hey! <laughs> uh you have on our notes, Senator Tim Scott has taken over the job of being the GOP's one black friend. Yeah, I, yes, I would yes. go along with that. Because you and I were raised in dysfunctional families and, you know, mm-hmm. my family had alcohol problems and addiction problems yeah, um, and bullying and a bunch of sort of malfunctioning childhoods. We are aware of bullshit, I think, at a higher level. People, people are putting on a show when they've got a facade, when they're, when they're lying about something that's clearly directly under the surface. Yeah, um, and yeah. we're sort of aware of that. But if you have been in this sort of state of blissful white privilege denial your entire life, mm-hmm. and, and you've been raised in a white community and everything's great and, and 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 nothing goes wrong until Democrats take over and somehow that's bad, so you've trained mm-hmm. yourself to look mm-hmm. at the world through a very specific lens, and you are by God not going to let that lens crack because if it does, yeah, if it, start, it starts letting truth in, your whole world might collapse. Well, and that's happening in our church. Yes. Oh, God. You know, yeah. United Methodist Church is is getting ready in the United States to mm-hmm. say no, to say what the Supreme Court said on Monday. <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> Who knew that the Supreme Court would be ahead of the United Methodist Church? But mm-hmm. uh, before COVID happened, we were set to have a general conference where, no, we're going to have gay priests and we're going to have gay marriage in the church. Uh-huh. And we're late to this party. We, we are, are. Our church is late. And in large part, that's due to us having a very large uh, African contingent where there are countries where it's illegal for a pastor to go along with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can go to prison for that. They can be killed for uh, that. They can be killed for that. And yep. so, I mean, that's part of it. But then there's the part where I don't, I think you know about this. Uh-huh. A couple left our particular our particular church building never to return again uh-huh. because the pastor said LGBTQ plus from the, the pulpit. Alt, from, from, from the, the pulpit. pulpit. Yeah. Said those letters from the pulpit and that was it. And that forever. Like I, we were gone forever. We have a Catholic bishop here in town. Or who's nuts. Who is a nut. He's nuts. Pop Rocky, I believe his name yeah, is. Yeah, Pop Rocky. And I'm sure they found a home. Oh, yeah. You know. There's a there's a place for them wherever they they won't hear those words. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow we should point out just FYI is the great big Trump uh, plague of Palooza in Tulsa. Um, yeah, if, which if he, it if it happens, it's not clear whether the Supreme Court of they're they're meeting right now, I yeah. believe. Well, and it occurs uh, to me Supreme that Court of Oklahoma that their plan to protect people um, at the at the proposed rally is exactly the same that Trump used for Trump university. You take their money, you have them sign a waiver and fuck them if they get hurt. So, yeah. you know, that's, and if you're dumb enough to walk into a Petri dish for the dear leader, I mean, welcome to Jonestown. Cause that's mm-hmm. exactly what this is. And, and let's move on now to happier things like, well, um, a lot of people, a lot more people are unemployed than they were before mm-hmm. last week, mm-hmm. uh, 1.5 million people. But, but there's a whole lot more people who think this country is are screwed up and needs to, uh, be change of direction than you would imagine. It's in the 60 to 70% range. So you and me and folks like us and good, honest, patriotic Americans are winning this debate 
on the ground. By the way, uh, I just looked it up. The Oklahoma Supreme Court is letting the rally go on. So, yeah. well, you know. All right. Um, last thing, Donald yeah. Trump took credit for popularizing Juneteenth, the commemoration <laughs> of the end of slavery. I you, did something good. You have good. a great video up at your blog, and people should go watch I, the should. Jeff Goldblum video. Yes, it's it is uh, Donald Trump. It is Donald Trump. Jeff Goldblum playing Donald Trump. You should. I go did watch something that. good. I made Ju- Juneteenth very famous. Each week, we post to our Facebook page and website an Internet Kitty sent in by you, the listeners. This week's Internet Kitty is Suchi. Suchi found the softest pillow on the bed and is sleeping on it. Do not disturb. And, of course, when Suchi wakes up on Suchi's schedule, Suchi will be eating freshly poured cat food, our fake sponsor. May I suggest that you all follow Suchi and in terms of coping? Sleep when you're tired, eat when you're hungry, and you'll do fine. Take care of yourself. Take care of yourself. It's really hard, though. It, it is, is really hard. This, we, these are these are hard days. Maybe we'll talk about that more next week. Listen but, to your body. Uh, listen to your body. Li- yeah, they, you know, I, you say that, but if your body is throwing up or that, is well, is totally upsetting all the time because you're under stress, it's really that's that's. I don't know what to say to that. It's it's really um, we are going through very hard times. You are not alone. No, if you're, you're going not. through some no. of this stuff, it's no. it's uh, it is hard times. Um, you and I were talking earlier this week about World War II and yeah. how just how bad it was around the world in 1942. It yeah. was horrible. It's horrible, and uh, no end in sight. And and interestingly enough, there were a lot of people resisting the idea of rationing. Mm-hmm. I shouldn't have to ration meat. Why do I have to ration gas? Yeah. You know, why do I have to make any sacrifices? And here's the thing. Enormous social pressure, enormous Mm -hmm, government mm -hmm. propaganda pressure to do these things is what moved people to behave in a way that was responsible given the circumstances. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that the government, you know, President Roosevelt from from the radio was saying, this is real. This is a problem. Mm -hmm. This is a war. We are fighting it for freedom for the world from Mm -hmm. tyranny. Shed sacrifice is what we need now. And you're it, and you're a part of it, Mm -hmm. right? You you contribute. Your your contribution is valuable. Yeah. And we don't have that leadership now. We have the opposite of that leadership. We have the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. He's probably looking at his phone right now. Mm-hmm. Whether you serve pet store perfection or dollar store direct, your cat will sit on the kitchen floor and demand that the food they eat is only freshly poured. Freshly poured, freshly poured. Oh my lord, it's freshly poured. And you can visit Suchi at our Facebook page or website. You can send your internet kitty or other pet to us at our email address, proleftpodcast at gmail.com, where you can also write to both of us. We do love hearing from you. Be aware that if you write us at any of our addresses, we reserve the right to read your email or U.S. Postal Service, go Postal Unions, letter on the air unless you say otherwise. Hashtag save the post office. And uh, we had another listener send us stamps this week. Thank you for the stamps. They've been put to good use. Yes, we have used them this week. Don't forget our Gourmet Coffee Guideline. If you can afford to buy an espresso-based beverage for yourself, buy one for us. This is not charity. This is our job. Approximately 1% of our listeners support this podcast with a contribution, and you can too. See our website, proleftpod.com, for details. Both our PayPal and postal address information is there, along with merch and all kinds of other good stuff at proleftpod.com. Please share our show on social media, and thank you for doing that. Hey, Drift Glass, how are the Internet Kitties doing this week? Well, Blue Gal, the Internet Kitties highly approve of the appearance of lightning bugs and hummingbirds in our front yard. Let's think about living. Let's think about loving. Let's think about the hooping and the hopping and the bopping and the loving, loving, dubbing. Let's forget about the whining and the crying, the shooting and the dying, and the fellow with a switchblade knife. Let's think about living. Let's think about life. Professional Left Podcast is recorded under a Creative Commons license, copyright 2019-2020, DGBG Productions.